What's up, guys? I had to pop my head in and, and, and give you guys a heads up and, and talk to you real fast. So, those that don't know, there's an article about Alec uh, who admits, and there's multiple sources as well as information, that he's working with Sergeant Vittler to work behind the scenes to take my business. Uh, and that was actually true. In fact, when he was dealing with Vittler, he called Vittler for help. Um, you know, a bunch of cops got called because he went to his uh, wife's parents' house, you know, her, his in-laws, um, and um, he had a gun. He was threatening the father and stuff, and, and Orange County was called. Um, and the only reason why he wasn't arrested then was because um, he called Vittler immediately, and Vittler inter interacted and intervened with what was going on. I believe we're pulling the 911 call on that and everything. Uh, we're delving into things that, you know, like Vittler said at Blue Jacket Park, you poke the bear one too many times, Mr. DeWitt. You poke the bear one too many times. Um, you know, I only started vlogging because I got fucking tired of all you liars and disrespect and my family, the lies and disrespect you're telling on my family and harassing my family and their Facebooks and their YouTubes. They, they have nothing to do with anything. But anyways, apparently now I guess we're on a different course. But the reason why I'm poking my head in right now is because the gentleman that had protection from Sergeant Vittler uh, and was able to record me without a warrant uh, and operate within my business as if he was some kind of uh, internal spy, um, breaking news, was just arrested for impersonating a police officer, open carrying of a firearm, working security without a license. Yeah, so the same guy that was telling me that if I didn't sell him half of my business, he was going to testify against me um, and that he was helping Vittler and he was going to ambiguously testify if I did sell him the business so that way he could lie for me. Well, apparently I, it's a good thing I didn't sell him half my business because if I would have sold him half my business, I don't think the state would be using him right now, being the fact he has now all these current pending charges. I'm a nobody, like I always tell you guys, I'm just a fucking guy that owns a business, has for 11 years. I just I just do what I'm supposed to do. I just try to get by through the day. And I don't know any more than anybody else, I, I guess. I don't know, guys. Anyways. At the end of the day, it, it's fucking crazy. Here's something. A word that some will know. Karma. Karma is a real motherfucker. And when you do dirt to people, it pays in tenfold. And I don't know about y'all, but slowly but surely... Karma seems to be working its way through the ranks of the Jeremy DeWitt case. Some people are leaving. Some people are quitting. Some people are getting arrested. I don't know. I don't know what you... Anyways. Well, karma's coming. And when karma comes, it comes with a vengeance and it hurts. And what it doesn't get, if it goes the way I'm thinking, or hoping, inshallah, inshallah, I'm going to come behind with a mop and get what's left. I promise you that. So anyways, guys, be safe. Be strong. Be careful out there. Motor One's rolling. Hey, guys, what's going on? So uh, today we're going to do the uh, reaction video to the actual Dr. Phil show, not just the uh, in the intro. It's it's going to actually be the show. 
uh, one of the couple of things we want to talk about, go over a lot of things, a lot of information. It, it was so much information that Dr. Phil made it two episodes, not just one, like most of his uh, guests. But uh, anyways, um, we'll go over some information so that way y'all can talk shit later um, and make fun of me and, and what I say um, because I, I see you guys on Dr. Phil as well. Um, so anyways, uh, before I do that, one of the things I want to say is to my fans, to the subscribers, you guys reading in the comments, you guys are right. Um, the keyboard warriors and the fuck boy trolls, um, I shouldn't be talking about them all the time. You guys are what's giving me the views. You guys are what's showing me that I need to show my story. Um, I appreciate you. I truly do. Um, we have some videos of, uh, fans that have actually showed up uh, at our office. And we'll show some of those uh, here soon. Um, obviously not everyone that lives in other states can be flying out to Florida to just pop in and, and say hi. But anyway, so let's get to this. Um, you know, so one of the first things is, is when you're watching Dr. Phil, um, you know, they start with all the rhetoric of this and that and, He's got the siren and that, and you know, I come onto the stage and, or not the stage, but I, I drive, I ride up on my motor and then he's asking me about the bike, which has those bluish purple lights for those that are watching on national TV. I don't know if your TV set has the blue tint adjusted as much as Vittler's actual eyes do, but maybe you saw the bluish tint. Um, but you know, and then Dr. Phil asks about the air horn. And, you know, he asked me to hit it once or twice and you guys see that. And I hit it twice and he's like, that doesn't sound like a police. No, actually. In fact, for those that are familiar with Florida, road rangers, public roadside assistance vehicles, um, private tow truck companies, um, funeral escort companies, not just mine, as well as the competition that all of a sudden went to black and white cars after they hired Vittler. Um, they use air horns. Um, and air horn is not illegal to use. Air horn's legal to use. Uh, Whalen actually makes those Whalen, uh, air horns, and they're specifically less than 100 decibel. They're right at 110. I mean, um, the 110 decibels is what is required to have for a car horn. Can't be louder than that in Florida state statute. Uh, anything louder would be considered a train horn and we don't have train horns. We have air horns. The difference between an air horn and a car horn is one sounds like a car horn and one sounds like an electronic tone. The electronic tone is the differential sound that we're looking for to get people's attention. So no, it doesn't sound like a police vehicle. It sounds like any other person that has some kind of responsibility or service here in Orlando or Florida that is able to use those. Um, and in fact, your buddy Corporal Ramsey's written two of those tickets saying that it was illegal to use. And the craziest thing is this two different judges in Orange County both said, N no, it's not. Uh, the only time it's illegal to use a horn in Florida is if you're overusing it for no reason. And both judges said that we're using our air horns to advise the general public that a funeral is coming and or that they have to wait. Isn't that crazy? The judges even said, and or they have to wait and dismiss the tickets. It's crazy. Anyways, so, you know, so we go into the stage, you know, we go in, into there and uh, let's watch it. You know, so here we start talking about the handcuffs and, and, the, and the pepper ball weapon. You know, and I'm trying to explain, of course, Dr. Phil is Dr. Phil and he's going to talk over you which I understand it's his show, it's his home. Uh, but you know, one of the things is we are talking about the handcuffs. Yes, I was ha I had handcuffs. We all saw it, no lie. And I, as I explained, or I tried to explain, uh, yeah, I had handcuffs the day before I was working in-house in an in-house casino. Um, so yeah, of course, you know, we had the proper right to have handcuffs. And one of the other things is uh, somebody had made a comment that it's not illegal to carry handcuffs, which is absolutely correct in Florida. It's not illegal to carry handcuffs. Um, not only is it not illegal, but it also to the point where 
if somebody were to commit a forcible felony, you would be able to use those. Now, I wouldn't use them and I wouldn't agree with that, but it is a possibility. Um, that's neither here nor there. So the handcuffs is a mute point, but for sure, for some reason, we push that to the limit. But again, the day before and weeks before in-house security, it's not even security, it's just in-house services. But then we go over to the gun or the pepper ball and we're talking about the yellow strip. Dr. Phil's talking about the, the pepper ball gun and how come I we do have some with the yellow uh, strips on them. Um, but I don't carry that one because my equipment is what's been issued to me and Pepperball came out with those high vis weapons way after they came out with the original all black. Um, so we have a lot that are all black and we have some that have that, that strip on it. I just never switched it out because as I said, as you can see, you can't see if the yellow strips on it or not because of the holster. So because of the holster, you can't see the yellow strip. See, see how there's no yellow strip. See the yellow shirt? You don't see the yellow strip. And I'm wearing one that has the yellow strip right now. But you can't see it because it's in the holster. Crazy, I know. So anyways, but, you know, let's let's keep going. I, I hope that answers some questions. I mean, who the fuck knows? The funniest thing is, is Dr. Phil's staff, they reached out to me and asked for a bunch of pictures of Florida motorcycle law enforcement officers, which is funny because you look it up online. But anyways, they asked us to send them over. So we sent a bunch of Florida motor units um, images, and we sent Florida patrol vehicle images. Uh, and then when they're comparing our bikes with the purple lights and our company name on the front, uh, they compare it next to a New York police motorcycle where he's in full class A as well. Um, I, I don't know about y'all, but class A is class A, no matter where you go, it's going to be blue or it's going to be Brown or it's going to be class A. So the, the whole point of sending pictures of Florida motor officers was to show that in Florida, all motor units wear white shirts. They wear a white long sleeve or a white short sleeve shirt. Um, and they wear a black belt, usually depending on the agency, um, unless you're FHP. If you're FHP, then they wear the tan shirts, no matter what. But overall, almost all motor units wear the white shirt. And when we met with the sheriff's office, when I first started the business, they even said to us, whatever you do, make sure you never wear a white shirt. And we have never worn a white shirt since the beginning of this business. Not in the cars, not on the motors, never. We've always made sure we either had the yellow green. And then when they asked us to start wearing the gray shirts, because for those that don't know, we went from these shirts to a gray shirt, which is funny that what you don't know in 2016, the lead lawyer for the Orange County Sheriff's Office, along with two of the head supervisors of the Special Operations Division, sat with myself and my attorney and at the direction of the sheriff at that current time and told us to go to the gray shirts that we were wearing. And they actually even chose it out of a catalog and said, we like these gray shirts. Please start using these instead of the yellow shirts, which matches our rain jackets. Wow. So they wanted us to change our shirts because these yellow shirts match their rain jackets. So they picked the gray shirt that they asked us to then implement. So then I spent thousands of dollars putting patches on them and getting those shirts instead of using the high vis. Crazy. Of course, as you can understand, as soon as this shit started, I immediately put my guys back in yellow shirts because these were the better shirts from the very beginning and that's why I chose them. For those that don't know, the yellow shirts create an optic nerve issue and causes an irritation in your eye. And that's why high vis is one of the colors that can be seen out of every color on a spectrum quickly because your eye is directed to it and the irritation in your eye causes an alert in your brain to make you see the color of this shirt and creates an optic nerve issue to where your eyes irritate when they actually look at the color so you're able to see it faster I did that research before I started this business and that's why we started with these yellow shirts from the very beginning but anyways long story short Go back to the NYPD motorcycle with the red and blue lights on it sitting next to my motorcycle with the purple and orange lights. 
yeah, I don't understand how there was a comparison there. And then there was other pictures that they showed with some other motors. And again, we're on BMWs with purple and orange lights and they're on Harleys with red and blue lights. And the red and blue lights are very pronounced. You can't be confused. They're red and blue, not purplish blue. But same thing with the cruisers. We sent pictures over Florida cars, which are usually all white or all green or black and tan. Um, in fact, when we started the business, we were the only agency with black and white cars. Um, it was almost not until about five years after we started that certain agencies started going to black and white patrol vehicles in our Central Florida area. Everyone in Central Florida almost had no black and whites. But again, I digress about that. Hey, you know, you're comparing apples to oranges, but then you're trying to say they're both apples, even though you can clearly, and so many of you have commented, how can you say that the NYPD bike is anything like Metro State? It says police right on it. It doesn't say Metro State. And it's got red and blue lights right on it. But hey, I guess we were trying to compare apples to, to oranges and say they were all oranges. But let's keep going. There's a lot of other things we could have talked about and talked about. You know, um, blue car, Porsche, truck, all those things. Again, those videos were gravely edited. We talk about blue car real fast and about how <clears throat> blue car was screaming racist obscenities as he was weaving in and out of the traffic. Uh, he rolled up to one of my guys and screamed to him, if these certain word don't have to wait at a red light, then I don't either. Um, later on, we find out that he was renting a vehicle. Uh, later on, we find out he's from uh, Alabama. Uh, later on, we find out he was here on vacation. Um, whatever the case may be, what the funny thing is, is you see in the video, he says, stop pretending you're not a police officer. You're not. Well, in Florida, that you just admitted that I'm not a police officer, and you know I'm not. So where exactly is the impersonating police officer? The statute says I have to dress and wear something that says police or sheriff and then make somebody believe I'm a police officer. Well racist guy just told you clearly on video that I'm not a police officer. So where am I impersonating a police officer? You can hate all this shit that happened. You can hate all the way I talked to him. You can hate the way it went down. I don't give a fuck. At the end of the fucking day, the man clearly states you are not a police officer, which means he never believed I was, which means I never led him to believe that I was. That's a fucking crazy statement. And to this day, nobody's actually for sure that that was actually happening on video. So, <clears throat> and, and then he's even told to call 911. And there's a statement that nobody seems to pay attention to. And that statement is, call 911. Go ahead. Let us tell them what you're doing. And if the majority that are watching this truly know the truth that the family we were escorting was a full only african-american <clears throat> family and some white hillbillies screaming racist obscenities i'm sure you can do the math and i'm sure that those that know who i am know that i'm extremely against racism you can hate me all the fuck you want you can hate my decisions in my life. And you can hate what I do and who I see. But I can assure you, I'm so far from racist that I sometimes wish that white people would have an education. It's sad. But I can assure you, when I, somebody's screaming at my funeral and almost causing an accident over and over because he's screaming racist obscenities because he's angry that they don't have to wait at a red light, the way I handled that was way more professional than maybe I should have. Anyways, long story short, so we're going on and on and on, and <clears throat> you missed that part. And then we're talking about the polygraph with Dr. Phil. I mean, here he's saying, we watched that video, and then you see here right here where he starts to say, well, 
I tried to talk Jeremy out of doing the polygraph. I never spoke to Dr. Phil ever once until that day of the episode when I was sitting on the stage. So when did he tell me not to take the polygraph? When did he say I shouldn't do it? When did he tell me that he didn't believe in them? For those that know anything about the show, although it's a great show and it's great for TV, do some research on Dr. Phil polygraphers and you'll see a three or four list of polygraphers that have been accused of multiple lies and taking money for false results and so on and so forth and been fired and or kicked off the show. Uh, that I didn't even know about before I even accepted when they offered me to take it. I was like, sure, I, I have nothing to hide. I didn't know about the history of the lying, the polygraphers that have lied for money, that have lied for ratings and things of that nature for the show. So definitely confused me and definitely I was a little taken back when he said on national TV that he tried to talk me out of it. That conversation never happened. Uh, again, I never even spoke to Dr. Phil until that day. Great man, but maybe there was a miscommunication or a, a error on, on some part. Um, maybe he was talking to somebody else on a different episode that they were taking a polygraph and he thought that was me, but I, I never spoke to Dr. Phil until that day. But anyways, let's go on to the next part go to where you know where we're talking to dr phil after the polygraph and he's saying if you could see yourself through my eyes you wouldn't feel that you're this or that or this what he's telling telling me about me um they showed that part which is which was great what they edited out which was really again a disservice to those that are watching um dr phil says that not only did his staff believe i was absolutely utmost professional um, he even says that, and they edited that out as well, when he's reading the letter from one of the funeral homes about how professional our company is. And he actually then refers to that and says, you know, my staff says you're absolutely professional. You very polite, um, never had a problem with you, never, no arguing. He's like, you'd be surprised how many people we have on this show that actually give my staff a very hard time. Um, and, you know, we, we talked about that for a little bit. And then he again says, you know, if you could see yourself through my eyes, um, you know, you wouldn't think that you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. But then he also talks about how I'm his, his staff said I'm very professional and he felt that I was a very professional person. My business was great. But then the best part is, is after he says all that, which they edited it out too. And, and I know you all can believe what the fuck you want. I don't really give a shit. But he says, and, and you can email my attorney. Maybe, maybe he'll be happy to tell you. But... He says, and I quote, everything that I've seen, everything I've read and reviewed, I don't believe you deserve one day in jail. Those were his exact words. I don't believe you deserve one day in jail. He said, you might have an anger issue, but you don't deserve to go to jail for any of this. Those were his exact words. You can call me whatever the fuck you want. You can tell me I'm a liar all you want. But I'm just now putting this in. And we'll put this on YouTube. And I can assure you, I promise you, that I won't have any lawsuits in my box saying that I said Dr. Phil said something illegally or lied about what Dr. Phil said. So I can't get sued if I'm not lying. So I can't get sued for copyright or something like that if he didn't actually say that. So I'll watch my mailbox and we'll give you a video post about that and keep you updated. But I can assure you the mail's not coming. So what I just said is exactly what Mr. Phil said, Dr. Phil said on his national TV show after 20 seasons. So let's move on to the next part. One of the things he said, and he said it to Amir very clearly to Amir and Amir and him actually communicate back and forth about it on national TV. But again, that was edited out as well, was he says, not once, but twice he says, you came very close to the line. There's a lot of things you do that bring you very close to that line. Your uniforms, your equipment, sometimes how you do things, he says, that brings you very close to that line. But then he says, but you never cross it. He's like, you never cross the line, but you come very close to it. 
And that's when he says again, again, that's why I'm saying I don't believe you deserve a day in jail. Crazy. Dr. Phil says you came very close to that line, but never crossed it. And you don't deserve a day in jail. I don't know if anyone else knows this about Dr. Phil because he advises my attorney as well as me. And they edited that out as well. But he advises that one of the things he used to do before he became Dr. Phil was he was an attorney and he handled trials and prosecutions. So here is a doctor slash old attorney, once upon a time attorney dealing with cases and trials saying you came very close to the line. You never crossed it. You don't deserve a day in jail. I know all you fuckers will talk shit, but I'm wondering if maybe there's more to the story, like the whole story, than you know. Anyways, next thing. So here, I, I'm going to pause it here because there's a lot of comments that are being made and they're not very accurate. And Blue Bacon, um, I, I hate to even use his name and everything on my channel to give him credit. But even Blue Bacon made a lot of false statements on his uh, open vlog or whatever that was where they where all you went and watched him or whatever the fuck. I don't know what you do. Um, but I never said Dr. Phil <coughs> kicked him off the show while the show was happening. What I said was, was literally after he stopped talking about how I took the polygraph and that he doesn't believe I deserve a day in jail, he then brought... Uh, Blue Bacon on well Blue Bacon was sitting on the on the stage me and Blue Bacon had that nice conversation while we were on commercial break about you know I'm a little disappointed in you young man he said what do you mean I was like I didn't know you were going to become friends with Vittler he's like oh you know it's not like we're best friends we've never gone ahead of beer together but yeah we're friends and we communicate back and forth wow <laughs> I mean so one of the deputies that's involved in an ongoing investigation is communicating with a person online. As we all know, he's using false accounts and stuff like that to make comments. But anyhow, I digress. So at the end of the day, you were flown all the way out there or you drove all the way out there. You were brought to the stage with your little intro. And then Dr. Phil asks you one question and then you talk about how the uniform looks too much like a police uniform. Uh, okay, well, we've already been saying all that. Congratulations, you reconfirmed what he said. But then what other questions did he ask you? What else did he talk to you about? What other statements did you make? Oh, that's right. He went immediately to commercial break and then said, get these two off my stage right now. So he said, get these two off my stage right now. And then he had you guys, ask, you know, taken off the stage on commercial break. No one said you were kicked off during the show. You, you were pulled off on the commercial break. You had, you, you got to say one thing. So you were very marginalized um, in reference to the whole case, the whole situation. I mean, you got to say one thing. But anyways, uh, yeah, so you weren't, I didn't say you were kicked off during the show. I, I love how people are saying that. Um, but you were kicked off by Dr. Phil by saying, get these two off the stage right now. Um, I, I mean, he asked you one question and, or, and you answered one thing. That was a lot of travel and a lot of work and a lot of everything. And a lot of for the NDA that you lied to all your people about, you know, for one question. Yeah, that's great. I, I I appreciate you bringing up my name multiple times for the views. Thank you. So anyways, um, and then the last thing I really want to talk about was, which is really disappointing to me, um, and you can ask Blue Bacon because he met him and they talked to each other a few times. So I'm sure he'll find a way to lie to you. Maybe he signed an NDA with this guy. I don't know. But I'm not going to say his name because... The man is very professional um, and actually does some extremely good security for a lot of different important people in California. Um, but they also do funeral escorts in California. Um, and Dr. Phil brought him on there and it was completely edited out. 
they showed the camera, which that camera for the for blind people, that's an amazing device. Uh, that that's great. I mean, um, it was it was great to see that commercial. The only thing is, is they placed that over where this person actually spoke, and this person actually says that not only do they own a funeral escort company, and I'm going to minimize what he's saying, but not only does he own a funeral escort company and we do the exact same thing as Jeremy, he said, but we have the exact same equipment as Jeremy. Our bikes are black and white. Our cars are black and white. Um, and then he even states that, in fact, our vehicles have red fa rear-facing flashing police lights, um, whereas Jeremy only has amber and purple. Um, our vehicles have purple towards the front. I mean, uh, I'm, I apologize, amber towards the front and rear facing rear, uh, rear facing the rear, red flashing police lights. Um, so in California, flashing rear police lights uh, in red is legal. And they have red flashing police lights from the side to the rear. So uh, he even said that his vehicles have even more lighting type of authority. He even states that. And then Dr. Phil says, well, would you hire Mr. DeWitt? And this person says, in fact, I would. He said, I don't agree with some of the terminology he uses, and I don't agree with some of the things he says on escorts. Um, however, and then he says, we go through the same thing here in California. We have the same issues. People cutting in, people disrespecting the funerals, people putting the families in grave danger and possibly almost creating an accident um, to where we have to say to them three or four different times to get out. Uh, and he says, I know for a fact that there's been many times where we've had to use different language or tones to make people get out of our funerals for the safety. Um, and that he would hire me because he felt that I was a very professional and squared away company. And uh, he's seen other videos, not just the edited real world versions. Um, and uh, so Dr. Phil, at that point, kind of changed how he was talking. Um, things got a lot nicer and more polite and then he reiterates that he doesn't believe that I should ever do a day in jail that we're a very professional company and even his staff says that so these are the things that we're seeing on the YouTube and these are the things that we're seeing on his videos of course the YouTube clips that he has for his show are a little spooled up to make you know think oh this and that and you know he's got the crazy face going you know we can say what we want, but at the end of the day, just like I said to him, and you can go ahead and say I try to deflect. When you're in that position, when it's you, when you're mourning your mother that you are extremely close to, or your wife or your husband, doesn't matter if you guys have marital issues, but if you really love each other, or your child, when you're extremely emotionally and distraught and you can't even focus on driving one you really shouldn't be and that's one of the things we tell our families when we start is if you know you don't think you can drive you should actually ask somebody else to do that for you uh, as we're telling them to turn on their high beams and hazards but an escort is an absolutely imperative thing until either they give escorts more authority like they do in Arizona in Arizona, they're able to use red and blue lights and sirens, and they're able to drive in opposite directions of traffic. Do I believe that might be a far reach? That might be a little more than I think even we should be approved with. Um, red and blue lights should always be designated for law enforcement. Do I believe sirens should be used? I do. I believe that sirens gets attention from people that are not paying attention. Do I believe a siren with purple lights is something that should possibly be more authoritative in Florida? I do. Um, do I believe driving on the wrong side of the road? Uh, that's a catch-22. Uh, but go look up Arizona funeral escorts. Go look up Colorado funeral escorts. How they have red and blue sirens, red and blue lights. Oregon, they allow them to use red and blue lights as well, which is crazy that our buddy with the piece of metal army police badge, uh, good old 95 Bravo brother, he's from and they do funeral escorts out there with red and blue lights so i'm a little confused and they're not security companies they're funeral escort companies anyhow long story short 
Dr. Phil was great. We were there those two days. It was it was not enough. Um, I wanted to spend more time in California. I have family in California, so it you know I've been there many many times. Um, but a lot of the staff that came with us uh, didn't get to enjoy it as much as they should. Um, but the two days we were there were great. Dr. Phil's staff is great. Dr. Phil's very nice. When the cameras aren't rolling, he was very polite to us, joking with us. His wife is a very sweet lady. She was very polite to me. Um, you know, those that want to just believe only what they see on TV, hey, I guess that's the reason why you only believe what you see on fucking real world. It is what it is. But I'm happy to sit here and explain it to you. If you believe real world, maybe you'll believe me. I don't know. Because a lot of you are talking shit, dumb as fuck shit. Oh, well, Dr. Phil's polygraph's real and your polygraph's fake. Let me ask you a question before we go. Let me get this straight. The gentleman on Dr. Phil that's doing a polygraph for TV ratings and money is more of a real polygraph than the polygraph that's done in Orlando, Florida from a gentleman that still works for the sheriff's office that does polygraphs for the sheriff's department that is doing it for very little money compared to what California boy was paid. And there is no TV publicity, no information about who he is. Who do you think is going to give more of a true answer? I don't know. But anyways, hey... Dr. Phil's show was great. You guys are great. My followers, I fucking love you guys. Don't misunderstand. Don't misunderstand. I love you guys. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have what I have. I appreciate it. Go to 